How's it going? I'm Steven. This is my channel on Vegas, and I thought I would do a video on the cancellation of tickets from a Canadian couple who had season tickets in Vegas to the Golden Knights. And uh, I wanted to give you some background on what it was like the first year being here and watching the team and why they might have canceled those tickets because there's a few things that no one's talking about. So just to give you some background, right? I'm from Calgary, Canada. I've seen the Calgary Flames play. Those tickets are incredibly affordable in a market where the team is 30, almost 40 years old. And you can get tickets for real cheap. In Vegas, however, it was an experiment. And so a little background on all this. When it was happening in Vegas, when VegasWantsHockey.com was just a website and uh, the Foley uh, family was just kind of looking around with the Maloof brothers to put a, th a thing together to get an ownership group here, it was a whole thing of, well, you know you're going to have an away crowd at every single game. And that's what everybody kind of thought was going to happen. I went to the draft. It was the expansion draft here at T-Mobile Arena. The tickets were incredibly affordable, but something interesting happened on that day. I managed to see, um, I managed to see just a Vegas crowd. And I thought I was going to see a crowd from every single part of the entire country except for Vegas. And I saw a Vegas crowd. The tickets were cheap. If you were out here during that day, you could get a pair of tickets for 50, 60, 70 bucks and go see the whole entire awards show and the expansion draft. That was a good deal. Mostly Vegas fans. And that was pretty cool. A tragic thing happened on October 1st. A guy climbed up the Mand or climbed up. The guy rented a room at the Mandalay Bay and decided to gun down 58 people. And hockey did what hockey does. It gelled around a community. Hockey is a very communal sport, if you're not familiar. And um, it, it did an amazing job at bringing the city together around it. And at first, everybody thought the team was going to be terrible. I mean, I watched all the expansions as a kid from, you know, the Canadian side of things. San Jose was bad. Fun fact, San Jose won, I think, 10 games their second year in of existence back in the early 90s. Like, come on, you, 10 games. You won 10 games. That's terrible, right? But something interesting happened. Whether or not the team was playing inspired over their heads because of the they were trying to because of the community that was behind them, or whether or not they were just a really talented bunch, which it looks like they might be this year because they're still in the fight for first in the West, and it looks like they're going to make the playoff run again. Um, the city kind of gelled behind the team. And for the first maybe 15, 20 games or so here in Vegas, you could get tickets for a decent price. You, you know, you could get standing room tickets to watch Sidney Crosby come into town with, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And those were 110 bucks, 130 bucks last minute. But then as things transitioned and as time went on, tickets got incredibly expensive. And I embarrassingly got involved in a ticket sale that went awry. And the way the ticket sales were set up was simple. Let me see if I can... Aha, then there's light. Uh, the way the tickets happened was the Vegas Golden Knights partnered with a company uh, that's a big, huge, major thing called Flash Seats. I don't think they own the company, but in order to get a ticket transferred to you, uh, they needed to know who you were, that you were a season ticket owner, and then the person buying the ticket had to give them all sorts of personal data, like driver's license numbers and dates of birth, to make sure that everybody was getting a legitimate ticket and there wasn't scalping going on. My season, my ticket buy for the a Flames game went completely askewed. Uh, my boss did a cool thing and took me and my wife to a game, which was amazing. I got to see the Flames from the 14th row, best seats I've ever had for an NHL game. And as time went by, this, the team got better. And eventually we ended up doing this. I actually have my Pacific Division Champs hat, but it's not here right now. And then we ended up going to this right here. And by the end, it was costing you three or $400 to go to a team that wasn't supposed to be any good, that the entire hockey world pooped upon the whole season and said, unsustainable, never gonna, oh, you're done, you're done. I mean, all, all the things we went through last year, it was a magical run, but it was costing three or $400 at the end for regular folks here in Vegas to go see a game. Now, it could be argued, oh, poor you, yada, 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 but the truth of the matter is it shouldn't cost that much to go to a hockey game. This is not the NFL. They play 41 times at home plus the playoff run. Now, I understand the playoffs being expensive, so I'm going to take that out of the equation. <clears throat> Towards the end of the year, playoff tickets were an arm and a leg, and there was times during the Stanley Cup final where there were more Washington Capitals fans in that arena than there were Golden Knights fans. The Knights stepped in and said, look, we control the flash seats tickets, we control the season tickets. 
we are going to make something called the Knight's Pledge. It sounds tacky, I know, but it's kind of a cool little thing where um, they told people if you're a season ticket holder, we'll give you a good price to re-up. We're not going to jack up your prices. We're going to work with you because there was some controversy about people not being able to afford what the Golden Knights demanded to renew your tickets. We'll work with you on a payment schedule. Just don't go up and sell an excessive amount of tickets through flash seats because that's the only way to officially do it and we will be monitoring you. No team, no professional athlete wants to play on their home ice, home field, home turf and see nothing but visitors' sweaters. And I will point out that when this team was coming into existence, they said, look, we suspect that until we can get a fan base and get some talent on the ice, we are going to be a predominantly fan or, or away team driven thing. So we're gonna have a lot of away sweaters. And that was expected. However, the city proved itself the fan base proved itself everywhere you went in the city. It didn't matter if you were in a, in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood where hockey isn't even a thing in that culture. It's more soccer and football and baseball. You saw Golden Knights gear. The city loves the team. But to charge three or four hundred dollars for a ticket or for a set of tickets plus parking plus everything else, that's excessive and they didn't want that to happen. So this Canadian couple in, in, in Calgary, Canada, they said that their, t their tickets were canceled. That was part of, as far as I understand, that whole Knights Pledge. If you think the Knights Pledge thing is kind of tacky, you shouldn't. Have you seen the pregame shows? They come out through a giant Knights mask. Lee Orchard, who's a guy on my Facebook friends list, he is that Knight. He's a pretty cool guy. And I mean, he, he, he does a really good job in that role. They've embraced the brand. That was what they told people. Don't sell your tickets excessively or else you run the risk of getting caught. This couple in Canada, evidently, evidently, they went to 10 home games. 10 out of 41. And what were they doing with the rest of the tickets? And here's how, here's, here's what this comes down to. When you're going to have something like season tickets, these are luxury items. Nobody needs say, season tickets to a sporting event or a team. They were 2,000 plus miles away. I don't know the exact mileage from Calgary to, uh, to Las Vegas, but it's not exactly an overnight drive. It's actually a couple of hours to fly here, to get a hotel room, to book it all out. They went to 10 games. What were they doing with the rest of them? Well, let's, let's assume that they were selling those on flash seats because a lot of people did that. There were people that bought these tickets, never intended to go to a game, and just brokered those seats. So a few things to keep in, in mind here, okay? Last year during the playoffs in Washington, they were canceling tickets to Nevada residents who purchased tickets for the Stanley Cup final who wanted to fly to Washington and go see a game. They reserved their tickets in Washington for people from Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., knowing full well they were going to fill the Capital One Center with Washington Capitals fans. On the flip side out here, there were people bragging on social media. I just got $10,000 for a seat, a single seat to the Stanley Cup Finals. People were making half their yearly income for a regular working hard hardworking person off of a single, you know, ticket to a, one of these games. And that's what they didn't want to have happen. So, do I feel bad that their season tickets were canceled? Well, I mean, it's not fair, right? But the thing is, if you if you live in America, it's not the same in Canada. One of the first things I noticed when I moved here 14 years ago was that every business has this thing on the door. It says, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. And that's the way businesses are in America, especially. If they think that you're doing something against what they want for their business practices, they may not invite you back into that business. If the casinos out here decide that they don't want you to come through because you're just winning too much on the tables and even if they can't prove you're gambling and cheating at the same time, they will ask you nicely, sir, we don't want your play here. That's what they tell you. We don't want you to game here. You can go at any other property, just not our properties. They have that right to do that. And that's what I think they did in this case. Right now, there's this little thing where I get text messages once in a while and it says, good news, we have two tickets that just opened up for game blank. Maybe it's game 42 or 43 or 44. Uh, text want two to these tickets. And I, and I do, and I, I swear, I could be on my phone, get that text, text want two to it. I want two tickets. I text the minute I get that text, use the quick reply on my phone, and they're already gone. Like, this team has so much support in Las Vegas. There are people that you never think would be hockey fans spending $200 on a Marc-Andre Fleury sweater or a William Carlson shirt. 
There are people that go to bars just to watch the games. There are people that talk about hockey that never talked about hockey before. And I'm in heaven for it. I'm loving it. I also love the fact that my two other teams, the Maple Leafs and the Flames, are doing great too. And uh, I just I just want to give that background on what's going on down here in Vegas because a lot of people are pretty angry at the Vegas Golden Knights and they're saying, bad move, Golden Knights. But what you don't understand here is that they built a fan base rather quickly. And whether or not it was the October 1st shooting and the fact that they gelled as a community or whether or not it was that they just fielded or fielded, put a really good talent product on the ice, they did a good job of that. All the credit goes to the team right now and to people who are buying and scalping these tickets i guess it goes to show it's a shot across the bow that your days are kind of possibly numbered so don't hate on the team as much just understand that there's good hard-working folks like us in vegas who may not make a hundred grand a year because this city isn't full of super duper incredibly wealthy people i know folks who work four or five jobs to make ends meet you know and that's who they want to be able to sell tickets to as well. When the Raiders come here, maybe all bets will be off. Maybe all the haters will be right and we'll have no market for this sport. But I don't think that's going to happen. The NFL doesn't care what you sell your tickets for. But hockey is a communal thing. That's something that I've taken pride on and told all my friends and family. Look how this forms a community. When I drive past the Las Vegas Ice Center a few miles off the strip and I see home of the junior Las Vegas Golden Knights Bantam Hockey, that gives me pride. My sport is being spread. So I'm curious what your thoughts are if you want to leave a comment. Thanks for watching this video. If you're just curious, I'm going to do more videos and have some video blogs on Las Vegas. And I have some stories to tell seeing as I work timeshare out here on the most famous and infamous part of real estate in the country. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.